Today we're going to be talking about the Pisco Sour and fun ways that you can customize this cocktail to your tastes. So the Pisco Sour is um, nowadays is a, is a classic Peruvian cocktail. Um, it's based on the classic sour format, and I think what trips up a lot of people when we discuss Pisco Sour is the Pisco. Uh, pisco is a Peruvian spirit. It's distilled from grapes. Uh, it's very simple. We make grape juice. We ferment that grape juice into wine, and then we distill that into this beautiful, unaged, clear spirit called Pisco. The spirit is super aromatic. It's got all these really lovely flavors of the grape, the base material. So then we take that base spirit and we put it into the sour format, right? And so any classic sour, whiskey sour, gin sour, pisco sour, will have you pairing citrus, usually lime juice or lemon juice, a little bit of simple syrup, so just sugar and water, and then the base spirits. And to make it a true classic sour, you want an egg white. So just like a whiskey sour is whiskey, lemon juice, sugar, and an egg white, a pisco sour is lime juice, since we don't use a lot of lemons in Peru, uh, pisco, and simple syrup with that egg white. The cocktail was most likely developed at Morris Bar in Lima in the early 1900s, 1930, 1929-ish. And it's really become emblematic of that country's uh, drinking culture. You can get it at pretty much any bar in Peru when you walk in. And trying to say the same for, uh, you know, any egg white cocktail in the States is, is challenging, right? There's not many bars where you can walk in and reliably get a good uh, egg white cocktail no matter where you are. It's a point of pride for a lot of Peruvians. So uh, the classic formula is three parts pisco, one part lime juice, one part simple syrup, and one egg white. You can follow that classic formula and create a really delicious, nicely balanced cocktail. It says Pisco Sour. It's not a super sour cocktail. Uh, it should be balanced, right? And the reality is that sugar is an important part of any cocktail. There are plenty of ways to emulate it, to remove it. But at the end of the day, it's about cocktails. They're about pleasure and they're about enjoyment. So don't deny yourself because you're not going to end up with the, uh, the same experience. So when we uh, want to modify the classic Pisco Sour, there's sort of a couple of ways that we can go about this. The first would be to flavor the Pisco itself. So, you know, by proving law, if uh, you buy a bottle of Pisco off the shelf, you know that it has not been aged in anything, no, uh, no wood, no oak. Um, they're not allowed to add anything, not even water, to the distillate after it comes off of the still. So you're never going to buy a bottle of a flavored Pisco um, at the market. But as is very common in Peru, you can make what's called a macerado. And the macerado is just taking your pisco and infusing it with different uh, flavors, different ingredients, fruits, spices, herbs. You could infuse this with mango, with passion fruits, corn, cinnamon, clove, ginger, nutmeg, anything you want. The more common method that we use in a lot of our restaurants to flavor our pisco sours is to simply add a puree or another uh, syrup, flavored syrup, to that pisco sour. And there's two ways to do that. One, would, if you're making these pisco sours one at a time, would be just to replace that simple syrup with a flavored simple syrup. So I've made a vanilla syrup here. Very simple. Uh, I took some vanilla beans, uh, sliced them in half, scraped out all of the delicious uh, black seeds out of the pod, and then I poured freshly made hot simple syrup on top of that, and I let it sit for a few days. And so then you end up with this really, really intense, uh, very flavorful vanilla syrup. So I'm going to use that method in this cocktail today because I'm just making one. I'm just going to show you a very simple way to make a unique version of a Pisco Sour. And this is a vanilla infused Pisco Sour. And I'm going to garnish this with uh, this really brightly colored dragon fruit powder and a little bit of blue spirulina powder. So we created this cocktail. It's called the King Cake Sour in honor of Mardi Gras here in the U.S. You know, Carnival is a celebration that happens across the world, it finds its roots in the Caribbean. But you see the echoes of Carnival stretching throughout South America and into the United States. In New Orleans, Carnival is sort of the, the, the big festive celebration that we call Mardi Gras. And this precipitates 
periods, a traditional period of fasting and, you know, sort of more moderation. So uh, cocktails and creations for this time period tend to be a little bit more exuberant and over the top. So uh, to start, you need a cocktail shaker, you need some pisco, uh, you need some freshly squeezed lime juice, some vanilla syrup, and some eggs. So we'll start with the lime juice. Now, we said three parts pisco, one part lime, one part sugar. In Peru, that would be three ounces, one ounce, one ounce. Um, in the States, we follow a slightly different formula. It works out to almost exactly 311, uh, but we want to serve a little bit more uh, normal portion size. So we're going to start with three quarters of an ounce of our freshly squeezed lime juice. And then we're going to do three quarters of an ounce of our vanilla syrup. I think it's worth pointing out as well, when we make our simple syrup, we follow a slightly different formula. A lot of times you'll see most bars will, will use an equal parts, one to one simple syrup. Two to one would be a rich simple syrup. Uh, we actually use the Peruvian method, which is three parts sugar to two parts water. So it's a little bit richer than a straight one to one, not quite as uh, tacky and thick as a two to one. So it gives our cocktail just a little bit more body. And then we're gonna take our Pisco, when you're selecting your pisco, you can use any good quality pisco. Quebranza is the most common grape varietal that you will find. I definitely recommend that. Uh, Italia is another popular grape varietal that you might find. It's a little bit more floral. And then you might see Acholado, which is a blend of two different grape varietals, usually something like Quebranza and Italia. Pick any one of those. They're all going to be delicious. You can even use a Mosto Verde pisco, which is a very uh, intense, luxurious style pisco. So we're going to pour two full ounces of Pisco into our shaker. And we're gonna separate our egg white. Uh, anytime you're using egg whites, I always ask my bartenders, please separate the egg whites separately. And you should be doing this whenever you're baking because when you crack that egg white, you wanna make sure that number one, you don't get any yolk or bits of shell in there. And that can be hard to do if you just chuck the whole thing right into your shaker. So we crack the egg and you just hinge it open. And if you're careful, you can actually use the eggshell itself to separate that yolk from the white. So the next thing we'll do is what's called a dry shake. So we'll add our ingredients together without any ice, and we're just going to lightly shake this together. This is just to begin the emulsification process. And you don't need to go crazy with it. Just a little bit to get the foam started. We'll add our ice. Um, the ice that you're pulling out of your home freezer is absolutely fine. It's usually relatively large, relatively dense. If all you have is little tiny flakes or chips, uh, then it might be worth you know, freezing larger cubes of ice uh, because the bigger pieces of ice will actually help create that frothing texture that you're looking for. So now we'll pop our tins together and we'll start shaking. And you don't need to go crazy with the intense shaking action. A nice, steady, consistent shake will really give you a better texture of foam. Think about when you're making a meringue, right? You don't want to whip it super quickly. You want a nice, long, steady shake. That's looking good. So we've shaken our cocktail. We're going to strain into our cocktail glass. When you're looking at your cocktail glasses, I typically suggest something in the six to seven ounce range, uh, seven to eight ounces for a, an egg white cocktail. And that will give you enough room to fill the cocktail all the way up. And then you'll get enough room to get that nice, that nice frothy head on top. So then I've got these little uh, uh, dusting wands. So just a little bit of this pitaya powder. This is uh, just powdered dragon fruit. And then this is a blue spirulina. And both of these ingredients are relatively odorless and tasteless, but they add just a really cool, very beautiful visual appeal to the cocktail. And that 
is it. King Cake Sour. So if you're going to make a macerato, you need to taste every day. Typically for most fruits, I start with about 24 to 48 hours. And then I start tasting after that. If I'm doing, you know, raspberries, strawberries, you know, passion fruit, things like that. Usually at about 36 to 48 hours is when you'll really start to get that flavor profile. You know, those fruits will continue to give you flavor, you know, for up to up to a week, really. It's important to note as well, if you're going to make these infusions, I definitely recommend infusing them in the fridge. This does have alcohol in it. However, that's not going to completely eliminate the possibility for bacterial growth. So just to be on the safe side, if you're making an infusion, just keep your infusions in the fridge. This is how we do it in the restaurant. It's, you know, just basic food safety. If you want to do a chili infusion, so we, we do this quite a lot. We use rocoto, which is this uh, really lovely Peruvian pepper. It's got a nice fruitiness to it, a little bit of biting spice, uh, or aji amarillo, which is another very popular, very famous Peruvian pepper. For those, I'll start with 12 to 24 hours and then taste because the capsaicin in, in those will continue to extract and you can really quickly go from a delicious, lightly spicy, warming uh, flavor to way too intense and pretty undrinkable, you know, within hours. So, you know, start with 12 hours to 24 hours for chilies. For most fruits, I would say start with 24 to 48 hours. Um, and then for spices and things like that, you know, it really depends on the spice. Cloves can over extract pretty quickly because they have a lot of clove oil and that oil is easily dissolved into alcohol. You know, other ingredients, you know, ginger, for example, uh, ginger is one of those flavors that, you know, you can throw a ton of ginger in there, get it very, very gingery and very spicy, but that ginger spice will be tamed really uh, quite easily uh, when you add all of your other ingredients to it. Mm -hmm.